In this episode, we're going to tell you how you can make money as a social media marketer, even in an economic downturn. Things are pretty shit out there right now. Prices are increasing and it feels harder to win clients. But the good news is that it's still totally possible to make money in an economic downturn. And in this episode, we're going to share how. Hi, I'm Laura Moore. And I'm Laura Davis, and we are the two Lauras. And between us, we've worked with hundreds of businesses. And over the last 15 years, we've grown seven businesses of our own and navigated pretty much every situation you can come up against as a business owner. Yeah, I've been through the last recession as a business owner, and we've all together just been through COVID. And there's big similarities in those situations from what people are facing now, the unknown, starting to feel concerned about what's to come. So in this episode, we're going to share three tips to help you to make money in an economic downturn. And keep listening because the final one will really help to make a difference to your income if you get it right. Now, you might be feeling like people just are not hiring right now. You might even be hearing that other social media marketers are losing clients. But we personally know otherwise. We know that people are still hiring. We know that people are still spending money on marketing. But we don't want you to just take our word for it. Keep listening to this episode because later on, you're going to hear from some other business owners who are doubling down on marketing right now and not reducing what they're doing. And if you're worried you might be about to lose a client yourself because of the economic downturn, the truth is that if you're getting results for them, then the economic downturn won't make a difference. They'll be in a worse situation without you. But you need to be honest with yourself. Are you really doing everything you can? Do you need to stop what you're doing and just take stock? Maybe you need to audit your own work. Can you honestly, hand on heart, say that you are doing everything you can for your clients? And you may well be doing that, but if you're not, then now is the time to stop what you're doing, review everything, chat with your clients and ignite a little bit of excitement back into your work. And remember why you are so valuable. You do all the social listening. You're looking out for those PR opportunities. You're dealing with customer services. You're speaking to influencers. You may be managing ads. You're building their brand. You're looking at all the data and making decisions that your clients have no idea about. You're selling your clients products and services and helping that business make money. So your service is absolutely crucial especially right now. And don't forget that if your clients don't understand that, then it's actually down to you to educate them on all of this and just to remind them of all of these things that you're doing. And also, this makes really, really good content. Like You should be putting all of this in your marketing so that your audience understands exactly what a social media marketer does. They can see the value in it and they want to invest money in that because they want their businesses to be doing well right now, yeah? And so if you're explaining all of these great reasons why they should hire you, why wouldn't they? And it's not just about when you're looking for new clients. It's when you're working with your current clients. I constantly have to remind my clients why I am so good. And there's no harm in having to keep doing that and just reminding them that actually all the services you are offering, social media management, unfortunately, people think that just means you're putting pretty pictures out there on Facebook and Instagram or what have you. And we all know it's so much more than that, but it's easy for our clients and potential clients to forget that. So that education piece needs to be repeated constantly. Yeah, definitely. And I think also that comes down to your reporting, doesn't it? And making sure that your reporting includes all of those really important things. It's not just, oh, we've had 20 new followers this week. That, that's not the important thing. That we can do without, that we can cut back on. It's how many people have we sent over to your website or how many customer queries have we dealt with? How many complaints have we managed to handle? It's all of that stuff as well, isn't it? Yeah. We, I had that this just this week with a client of mine and there, there's a WhatsApp group with all of their staff on and all the sales team were like, bigging themselves up of how many sales they'd made that week and how amazing they were. And they were all giving themselves these pats on the back. 
And then they just made some little comment about, oh, can we just make sure we tell everyone on social media how brilliant the sales team were? And it really, it took every strength I had to just not reply with a really arsey comment. It's like, I want to remind them, well, how do you think you got these leads? Did they just fall on your lap? (laughs) So yeah, I for one will be making sure at the end of this month, I'll be reminding them all how many leads I have sent their way because I think it's really easy for a staff team, especially when the marketing is outsourced. So you're not part of that team. It can be really easy for them to forget about you and about all your hard work. So just be prepared to just sell yourself constantly and just big yourself up. Yeah, definitely. Big yourself up as much as you possibly can. And it might feel like it's really awkward to do that. I think it's Mm. so important, isn't it? So you just have to get over yourself a bit and just channel your inner sales team and beat yourself up and tell everyone (laughs) how great you are. And it's all about having that kind of positive attitude as well, isn't it? You don't just want people to know how great you are. You need to feel that positivity as well. Because as soon as you switch on that negative Nancy vibe, everything goes to pot, doesn't it? You start feeling the imposter syndrome. You don't want to put yourself out there. And then, yeah, obviously you're not going to win clients and you might start losing clients. So you switch on that positive attitude and make sure you've got that sort of winning attitude as well, I think, for sure. It's when you get that, well, what's the point? What's the point in me marketing myself? It's when you start to have those kind of negative yeah. thoughts, then everything just snowballs on a downhill. And because obviously you're not going to win clients, you're not going to get new work, you're not going to get recommended if you just completely go off grid. So just try to remain positive. Yeah. And if you have got that mindset that businesses are not investing in their marketing or businesses are not hiring or, you know, you're going to lose your clients, just try and flip that. And don't just take our word for it. There are so many business owners out there who are still hiring. And we're just going to play some clips from some of the people that we know just to kind of reassure you on that. Hey, I'm Michelle Lloyd. I'm founder of United Art Space, And I am definitely investing in marketing at the moment. I have, like everyone else, been impacted by the pandemic and the situation in the world right now. But we are looking to invest more in our marketing team and have a solid strategy behind us. So I think there's lots of people out there who are eager to find social media managers and marketing managers at the moment. I'm Laura Phillips. You're joking. Not another one. I am the CEO of Love to Launch. We're a launch agency and launch team training company. There's a trend that we've noticed. Our established clients, those who've been in business for quite a while, are actually putting more marketing budget into their projects. And they're doing that because they've been through a recession before. They've probably been through a significant crises in their business. And the one thing you cannot do as a business owner is pull back your marketing budget. That's the one thing you have to keep going and they know that that works. And so they're the ones who are investing more and more. So what we have to do as service providers is work with those clients, work with the ones who are focused on putting more into their business instead of trying to cut off the thing that's actually the lifeline. Okay, so the second thing that you need to do is to really look at who it is that you're working with and who it is that you're trying to market your business to. And you really want to focus on targeting the more recession-proof businesses out there. Hang on a minute. A recession-proof business. What do we mean by this, please? So a recession-proof business is a business that would supply people with like their basic needs, if you like. So whether it's like personal needs, like food and shelter, um, it might be healthcare, it might be financial services, or businesses like accountancy and IT. So it's a businesses that no matter what is happening in the economy, people will still spend their money on those things. So Sue in our membership is a prime example of this. She recently won a six month contract with her local council to run the socials for their tourism campaign. Okay, well, hang on a minute. Isn't a tourism campaign, isn't tourism like luxury, isn't travel luxury? So, surely that isn't a recession proof business? Yes and no. So, tourism as a whole, yes, probably people are going to cut back on going on holidays and all of those sorts of things when they're you know, worried about money. But from the perspective of the council, 
it's really important that they continue to promote their local area, that they continue to promote the local businesses in that area so that those businesses are still making money. So by focusing like on a social media campaign for tourism in the area, they're going to be bringing people into that local area. So I don't think that is something that a local council would cut back on. I think that's very different to your local Airbnb and what have you. Okay, so it's about looking at the individual sectors, I guess, and figuring out where they're going to be investing their money at the moment. And then that will give you a bit of a steer. Also thinking about where people are actually going to continue to spend their money because those sorts of businesses are going to be recession proof. Yeah. Okay. So you could give have like a coffee shop, for example. Are people still going to be going out and buying their £3.50 cups of coffee or are they going to be just making it at home and taking it in their travel mug? So you can consider that kind of business, like buying that coffee is a potentially a luxury for some people. For others, it will continue. But you also need to just think about the maths about around your clients. And if you think... For a coffee shop example, say a coffee is three pounds or three pounds. I don't actually know how much a coffee is. Say a coffee is three pounds fifty. How many coffees does that coffee shop need to sell to be able to pay for your monthly bill plus ad spend if you're doing ads as well? So is that a viable option? Now in some places it may be you know you may have a coffee shop right on the main main pathway down to the train station that thousands of commuters go on every day and they will still be going to work and i suspect they people will still be buying their coffees but if they're more of a tourist destination or off another little side street and less people are going to be passing are they going to make as much money are they going to be harder hit and a coffee shop is obviously just one example of those, but just think if, you, especially if it's a low ticket business, are people still going to be spending and are there going to be enough volume of sales for that business to be able to justify paying for your fee? And it's a simple maths calculation, really. And if the numbers aren't on your side, then I personally just wouldn't even entertain working with a business. If it was someone who had a higher ticket item where it's still fairly essential and you don't think will have too much of an impact because of an economic downturn, then obviously you can then investigate that avenue instead. But it's always worth saying, even even in an economic downturn, some luxury items will continue to be bought because there are plenty of people in the world who aren't affected by an economic downturn. I think also you need to think about not just what it is that they're selling or the price of what they're selling. It's the type of business they are. And do they have that mindset to continue to invest in their marketing? Like, why would they do it? So, for example, if there's a business who's got a big team who they want to continue paying their wages, they need marketing to bring money into their business. So, of course, they're going to be in the right mindset to continue to spend on their business. Like one of your clients has recently really doubled mm. down on their marketing, haven't they? Because they need yeah. to sell more. So it's looking at those sorts of businesses, businesses who've got a team to support maybe more so than maybe a one-man band, although that is a big sweeping statement. And also looking at online businesses, for example, online businesses like coaches, membership site owners, course creators, those sorts of um, pretty newish, I suppose, types of online businesses really understand the benefit of marketing. They know that if they don't double down on their marketing, they won't get people buying their courses or joining their memberships or what have you. So those sorts of businesses who really understand the value of marketing are definitely going to be the sorts of businesses who will continue spending and continue hiring. Okay. So let's give some more examples of businesses that are going to continue hopefully to do well in an economic downturn. You go first, Laura. Okay, so one that I think is really important to have on your radar that will still work, probably people are definitely going to be still be spending money on, is beer, wine and alcohol. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you will still be spending money on beer, wine and alcohol, right? Maybe not the beer. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that. Just think about, you know, yes, 
people want those things that make them feel good. I we had a conversation, didn't we, where you were saying that people will still spend money on like chocolate and sweets and cakes and stuff like that because it makes you feel good. Yeah, that's me as well. It's not great for us, but we'll still be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another one, which we did a bit of research on this because I found it really interesting. Apparently, people that sell products for children generally fare well because parents would rather cut back on other things before their children were to suffer. So if you sell things for children, and obviously some of those things may be essential items, you know, like nappies and milk and what have you, but if your clients or potential clients are selling products for children, then apparently they do okay because parents still like to spoil their kids. Yeah. And similarly with the pet industry, Pet industry does pretty well, even when people are cutting back, don't they? They're still like this. Obviously, you're still going to go and buy your dog food or your cat food, what have you. But other little luxury items that you might buy for your pets, you possibly won't cut back on. There's also yeah. the essential things that we've already spoken about, like financial services, healthcare, all of those sorts of things will typically do pretty well. Just think about yourselves as well. Think about where you are going to be spending money and where you are going to be cutting back, if at all. But if you are cutting back, then that is just giving you personally a few kind of red flags, I guess, as potential clients to approach. So just bear that in mind, even if they approach you. Yeah. Like, would you cut back on ordering takeaways or going and eating in a restaurant, for example? Would you cut back on spending money on clothes or handbags and things like that? It's just thinking about how you or the people who are around you, how are they changing what they're doing and then applying that to potential clients? Yeah. But if your business approaches you and you're, they're like a high street kind of level of handbag shop where they're kind of medium price point where the masses in theory are spending then that's one consideration. But if you're appealing to the very, very wealthy, they probably won't be overly affected. So they may still carry on buying their 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I don't even know how much they are. Really expensive handbags. So yeah, yeah, do take it on a case by case basis. And I think there's also a, a case to maybe say that young people don't have these sorts of things on their minds so much that they continue to spend. And quite often, some retired people who have got, you know, money to spend, maybe they don't have families that they want to pass the money down to, all of those sorts of things, like they will continue to spend. So it's just thinking about those different types of like different sectors as well, I suppose. Yeah, the different audiences that your yeah. clients target. Also, it's really important to say that even in an economic downturn, please do not think that you need to put your prices down. Like absolutely do not. And in fact, one of our members recently, Sarah, she pitched for two new clients recently and she put in prices that would double her income. And despite the economic climate, she still won them both. So don't think that you need to put your prices down. Yeah. And then we've got Kelly, who is another member of ours. She has told us recently that she's making more money right now than she's ever made. So much so that she's now got an employee. So she's taken on her sister to work with her and she's hit the VAT threshold. So she's now having to go VAT registered, which for those of you who aren't in the UK, uh, the VAT threshold is about £85,000. Pounds. So once you hit that bracket, you have to add that, like which is twenty percent more, on to your bills to your clients, which is great. It just shows that um, her business is growing, and she's also working with businesses who hopefully won't be bothered by that twenty percent increase as well. And then there's also Laura, great name by the way, um, <laughs> who's also in the Inner Hub. She told us um, just recently that she'd just won a client who was like her perfect client. So it's definitely, it's not all doom and gloom out there. Please do not think it is. We're personally also seeing demand for social media marketers. We're both getting leads in our inboxes, aren't we? In our own inboxes, not our joint one. And we've also on our Meet the Social Pro directory, we've had 1,800 new visitors just in the last three months alone. We're recording this in July 2022, by the way. So in the last three months alone, we've had 1,800 new visitors on the directory. There's also been 58 leads added to our client leads wire in the last 12 weeks. So there's a lot to play for out there. Yeah. And there's definitely people out there. They're definitely looking. And I think it's worth for those people who don't know us quickly explaining what our Meet the Social Pro directory and our leads wire is. So our Meet the Social Pro directory is 
our directory of our members who have a, as part of their membership, they are able to list themselves on the directory. And we send everybody there who is looking for a social media manager, an ads manager, a trainer, a coach. And yeah, and it gets a lot of interest. And then our leads wire is where people have approached us directly, either Laura and I separately from our own freelance businesses, or they may be struggling to find someone specifically on the directory. So they'll just drop us a message and we'll summarize that and pop it on the leads wire and people can apply for those positions directly. Yeah, we've talked quite a bit about the inner hub in this episode. So if you are not a member um, and you want to come and join us, then head over to the twolauras.com forward slash inner hub and you can pop your name on the waiting list there. So those are a couple of things um, that will help you to make some money. So really spend some time considering if the businesses that you are usually working with or that you want to target in your marketing are the kind of businesses that will continue to invest in their marketing over time. And obviously going back just to what we said about that positive mindset and just how valuable you are as well. And then the final big thing that we want to talk to you about, the final thing that will help you to make money in an economic downturn is your offer. And if your current audience falls into the bracket that might be non-recession proof businesses, or if they're the type of businesses that you think are going to pull back on budgets and not spend so much, then we don't want you to start worrying. You don't need to go out and build a whole new audience that you've, you know, you've already spent time doing that. You just need to think about how you can serve them because they still need your help. They just don't need you to maybe do it for them. So it's about creating some alternative offers for those types of businesses and ways that you can help to support them in other ways. So you might want to think about, for example, adding in power hours or nurture packages on like the lower end of the budget scale. So do you want to talk us through what a power hour is? Yeah. So a power hour, which is something that you, both you and I have done multiple times. I think you probably way more than me. <laughs> but a power hour is essentially one hour with a business to help them with anything they need within their business. Now, I think you mainly did ads ones, I think, if I'm correct, whereas I did. Yeah, towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. I did social media and as ones. And it's basically, you can help them with anything they need to know. So it might be, how do I use Instagram reels or how do I get my messaging right on LinkedIn? They're normally small things. Obviously you've only got an hour, but they're always well received by businesses because they're just trying to tackle that one little issue that they've got within their own social media marketing. So And many times I had clients who came back and wanted repeat power hours. So they would come back once a month and tackle something new. And I developed um, nurture packages, which meant people can buy essentially a bundle of power hours to be able to work with them over a longer period of time. Um, So there's all sorts of training and coaching kind of packages that you can develop for people who need the help but can't afford to get somebody to do it for them. So they just need that hand holding, I guess, to help them to still move forward with their own social media marketing, but without having the expense of actually outsourcing it. And if you do a really good job of this, and then in six months, a year, two years time, when that business is is in a better situation and can afford it, hopefully you're the person that they'll come back to. So sometimes patience pays off here, but giving them a good service is a great way to help. Yeah, definitely. And it could also lead to some really good referrals as well, can't it? Yeah, yeah. I had some great referrals from Power Hours. Yeah. But also on the other end of the scale, so like whereas your Power Hours and your nurture packages might be that sort of budget offer, I suppose. Don't forget that even when people are cutting back, some people will always go for that high ticket option. Mm. And if you don't have a high ticket option available, they can't buy from you. So VIP days, for example, are a really good sort of option for a higher end budget scale. Um, So where you're maybe spending the whole day with somebody instead of just a, a power hour, you're spending the whole day with somebody either in person or on Zoom and you're helping them. Maybe you're going through a whole strategy with them. There's lots of different things you can do sort of in a VIP day. And it might be that you're doing something with them, but it might be that you're doing something for them. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. I think there's a real need 
for this at the moment. If you imagine there are businesses out there who are good, successful businesses and they maybe just manage their own socials in-house. They've got someone who is, is doing it for them. But they realize that now they really need to go all in on their marketing and potentially the skills within the team aren't good enough. Um, so they want to learn to do something better, something within their social media marketing better or their ads better, but they want to know it now. And I think we fall into this category a lot, don't we, Laura? It's yeah. like we, we realize there's a gap. We want to learn something and we want to do it now. We don't want to do a course that's going to take us six months. We don't want to do a series of power hours over a six month period. We want to know everything. We want to know it now so we can implement it now because we need to do everything now. Because now and is also important. we want it to be specific to us. Yeah. Don't we? We don't want generic advice. We want something that's very yeah. specific to us, answers our exact problems. And we want to be able to go to whoever it is that's delivering that VIP service and ask them questions with the things that we're struggling with and know that the answers will be relevant to us and not just to everybody. Yeah. So just because, you know, there's talk of these economic downturns and people think, oh, no one's going to be spending money. In actual fact, there may be lots of businesses out there who recognize the need and urgency to really double down on their social media marketing. So they're prepared to invest more, mm. but they don't need to outsource it but they just need the help. So don't just think, oh, well, I'm not going to do any kind of high ticket offer because obviously no one's going to spend. Actually, you may well be leaving money on the table, as they say, by just completely ignoring that offer. And it's, I think I'm passionate about this one. I definitely think you need to just have a, stop what you're doing and just have a think about what you can offer businesses who need help and need help now and are prepared to pay. Yeah. And like, let's be realistic. These VIP high ticket offers are not going to fly off the shelves necessarily. If you don't have one, you're never going to know if someone will buy it or not. Yeah. So it's something that you need to have in your offer list, if you like. So there we have it. That's how you can make money in an economic downturn. Now, if you find it tricky to sell, then you're going to love next week's episode where we'll be helping you to make some mindset shifts, which I find really difficult to say, some mindset shifts so that selling on social media becomes far easier and actually more enjoyable for you. So make sure you don't miss that episode. Hit follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to the podcast right now so that you can listen to that next time.